enter nhs nhs this nhs that nhs this NHS. not even healed properly emotionally mentally physically i wasn't healed and somebody is there talking to me about job hello hello focus on nhs i'm like what is so special about this nhs i said i'm not dressing up for anybody i'm not dressing up for anything again hey guys welcome or welcome back to my youtube channel <laughs> ah you can't believe the time i'm filming this video this is 3 a.m 3 a.m but i know myself if, if i don't film this video now i'll be carried away by a lot of activities i just started my leave my one week leave today and i'm happy about it i want to make the most of it so in this video i'll be just seeing you guys about how i got my full-time job as a dependent <laughs> in the uk um thank you for watching my last video i'm so grateful thank you so much for the nice comments you left thank you my girl joanna <laughs> so you know um you guys know that i gave birth to my baby january of this year and before i started a little backstory sorry before i started working before i no before i i got pregnant or, or before i um came to the uk when I, I was telling god that when because i already know that somehow the government pays pays you maternity allowance if your employer is not able to pay you the government pays you if you meet the criteria and the criteria is not much actually if you ask me so i was telling god i want to enjoy this maternity allowance from the government because i wasn't really working much i was a student i wasn't working much i was just working i wasn't working much i was working once a week some weeks i don't even work you know because um of emmanuel and let's take care of emmanuel and then school too was quite demanding and then baby was working so hard to pay my school fees and all that so between all those i just couldn't work properly so i was working just a little bit a little bit but then i was telling god i want to enjoy the maternity allowance and they pay you for nine months nine good months so fortunately for me i was able to get enough pay slips to apply for the maternity allowance so in my mind in my mind i'm going to stay at home for like at least six months before i start working but then baby started telling me you need to get a job you need to get a job so i can support me i've been the only one you know for a while you need to get a job and then my mom was coming it won't be proper that she comes you are at home she's at home the money the government is paying you is not enough so you need to get a full-time job and the other main reason was i need to get a full-time job in time okay like before my mom comes i need to start applying like immediately i give birth i need to start applying you know because we don't know how long it's gonna take for you to get the job so that once you get the job and my mom comes or once my mom comes and i get the job i can start working you know long before because my mom stayed with us five months so that before my mom goes i must have built a good relationship with my manager so i can speak to my manager so that she can align my shifts with his shifts i mean that's what baby was telling me you know because he works four nights per week so if i get a job that i can be working at night i can just tell them i will be working just three nights per week then when my mom is going i can talk to my manager so that she can align my shifts with baby's shifts you understand so that those he will work four nights and those three nights is not working that's you know the nights i'll be working i hope you understand what i'm trying to explain <laughs> so that was um that was exactly what happened i mean i was so upset because i mean i've not even healed properly emotionally mentally physically i wasn't healed and somebody is there talking to me about job hello hello <laughs> but then he was making a point he was making a point he was making a point and of course i needed to help financially because 
he has been the one carrying the burden since we came to this country which i truly appreciate so but then no uh, he was not saying nhs 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 enter nhs nhs this nhs that nhs this NHS. i'm like what is so special about this nhs excuse me you should not come for me i know that nhs is good at least you are most certainly sure of um career development you know and all that and job security you know and it's mostly immigrants that are in the nhs at least maybe there's reduced racism i really don't know but i think that's what makes nhs special and then you're working for the government basically so if there's any other thing that's special about nhs please you push tell me so you know when baby was telling me this apply for job apply for job i was not interested in the list i was not interested i don't i don't want this video to be very long i was not interested because i wanted to heal properly you know but he said no in fact he got upset with me i started applying for the job by himself he arranged my cv for me then registered me on, on indeed and set up alarm for me you know so that i'll keep um as an alert so i'll keep receiving job alerts once he, he told me that once i do one nhs application then other applications under nhs i don't need to fill the form because you guys know how how um daunting to fill nhs application form is you know those scenario questions you have to now answer them in fact the first application i started when i finished giving birth or before i gave birth i can't remember he even started telling me about this job hunting before I gave birth to, but I was not even in the mood at all. I started one application. The the application form was too much. I gave up and left it there. So when I gave birth, we started. Um I was now getting a lot of alerts. So I now managed <laughs> managed to fill one NHS form, application form, and then um, I'm not working with NHS disclaimer. I managed to fill one NHS form and then um, the other forms I filled, I now use the same answer I filled in the first one to fill all of them. You get what I mean, right? So, uh, by the way, I was applying for jobs, healthcare assistants, um, senior healthcare assistants, pharmacy assistants, um, even um, stay at home jobs. I applied one with is this Santander Bank or one other bank like that. I mean, I was just applying anything that came my way. You understand? I was get receiving a lot of unfortunately, unfortunately, but that didn't deter me. I was still applying. So, um, even agencies, I was just applying, 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 sending in my application, just be applying anyhow, anywhere, even you know, um, community work. So. <laughs> I was applying like Kilodi, applying, 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 applying. So <laughs> the first interview I got was from where I was, I'm currently working. So they now sent me as a team leader. I, I don't even remember the application because I applied for so many. I didn't remember what the application was for self. So they sent me um, an email telling me to come for an interview on a on a Wednesday. Yeah, the interview was on a Wednesday. So <clears throat> I said, okay, I'm going to come for the interview. Then <laughs> I now got another interview from NHS, almighty NHS, to come for an interview on a Thursday okay on a thursday of that same week so the first interview i got was on a wednesday then the nhs interview was on a thursday and the job was for band three is a band three role um renal renal assistant renal support worker yeah renal support worker so uh, the person is supposed to be working in the hemodialysis unit if you get what i mean in the hospital and the hospital was just a stone throw from my house very i can practically trek walk down to you know my workplace and 
very very close to my house so i was so excited i was so happy i was so motivated i was i called my pastor i told my pastor that i have an interview with nhs <laughs> that i need to get this job i need to get this job because number one is band three i can move up the ladder fast fast they can train me in school to be a nurse number two is close to my house i can just go and come back you know what i mean i can take my son to school then branch to work and do I need to get this job he prayed for me prayed for me that i'm gonna get the job so the first interview that i got for wednesday i now baby now advised me that i cannot combine two of them together what i need to do is to postpone that first one to the following week monday then focus on nhs prepare for the job i sent an email back to the first company and told them that I won't be able to attend the interview on Wednesday. They should reschedule me to Monday the following week. And I didn't get any response from them. I was really concerned. So I called them. They said, no, 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 they, they can't, they can't reschedule the interview. If I miss it, I miss it. I said, no, what do you mean? I, ca I can't reschedule the interview. So the manager, I think it was the manager that picked the coach. And I said, okay, she can do Friday of that week. I said, okay, Friday is fine by me. Friday is fine. So we scheduled it by, by Friday, 12 noon. I said, okay, let me prepare for the NHS interview first. I forgot about that one. I was focused on NHS interview. I started <laughs> spending sleepless nights. Spending sleepless nights. Within one week of preparations, I spent sleepless nights preparing for this interview. I watched a lot of videos, uncountable videos on YouTube. I wrote down a lot of questions. I wrote down a lot of answers. I started memorizing them. I started praying. As in, before I, I start preparing, every night I will pray. When I finish, I will pray. I will, I, will tell, I, will, I was telling God, God, I trust you. I'm going to get this job. You can imagine. Maybe I was trying to bribe God. I really don't know. But I was so serious and I was so positive that I was going to get this job. You know, the way I was preparing, the, whole, the way I was trusting God and all that and all that. Thursday came. Yeah, Thursday came. I woke up very early, bright and early, bitted, wore a very nice dress, a very nice coat with my long hair, packed it very well, wore a heely shoe, carried my nice fancy bag and got to the interview, got to the hospital one hour before time because I know one here say we should bear the mama fly. So I got there. In fact, they even thought I was the, uh, you know, first, you know, I think my interview was for 10 a.m. I got there by 9. By 9.30, they called me. And when they asked me, my the next cover is not me that's supposed to be in the interview by 9.30. They now said, look, I should wait. When is my turn? I can now come. So I went, entered the interview. They were asking me, asking me questions. I was answering to the best of my knowledge. But you know how you go for interview now they are answering they are, you are answering questions and they are nodding they are nodding they are nodding and you'll be thinking that you're saying the right thing so my dear i was just answering to the best of my knowledge but so most of the questions i prepared for did not show up most of the questions i prepared for didn't come and they just asked me other questions you know how i'm going to handle racism i mean like if I see a patient being racist to another patient, and if I see something like that, what is professional boundary? I mean, questions I didn't even prepare for. Oh my God. But then, I didn't let that, um, you know, discourage me. I answered to the best of my ability. So then I said, okay, they're going to call me that same day to tell me if I got the job or not. So I went home and slept. When they, they now called me later in the day when I was sleeping and told me that unfortunately I didn't get the job. Hey, hey, I was so discouraged. I was so heartbroken. I was, I felt so rejected. I'm like, after all my preparation, after all my prayer, after all my sleepless nights, 
as I was so discouraged, I said, I'm not applying for any job again. I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing this. <laughs> Baby said, no, 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 it's not, it's not like that. It's not the attitude. That is not the attitude. He now told me, do you know how many interviews I've gone for? I did not get the job. That is not the attitude. You have to continue applying until you get it. So, I... <clears throat> Then Friday came the following day. I was so reluctant to go for this interview because somehow I was so sure I'm, I'm not going to get it. I don't even know what I'm going. I'm, I'm not prepared for this interview. And this job is the job of a team leader. Team leader. I have not done the job of a team leader before. I mean, you can say maybe in Nigeria when I was working as a superintendent pharmacist in a pharmacy. I don't know. Maybe you can call that a team leader job. I really don't know. But you know what I mean? I don't have that UK experience. I don't even know how I qualified to be called for the interview. Knowing my work history in this country. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Whether I, I didn't think I was even going to get the job. I, I was so reluctant. I was so angry in my spirit. I was, I was feeling so heartbroken. Friday came, I was not telling baby, oh, these people did not send me confirmation email. Should I go? I don't want to go. Baby said, just go. Just go. Just go. Don't worry. They will do your interview for you. Whether confirmation email or not. She said, agreed on Friday. Just go. I just dragged my... I said, I'm not dressing up for anybody. I'm not dressing up for anything again. <laughs> I was so upset. I didn't dress up. I just wore a normal gown, wore a normal, you know, jacket that didn't look fine, wore flat shoe, just carry myself. In fact, I dragged myself. I didn't carry myself. I dragged myself practically out of my house. So when I was in the bus, I didn't prepare for this interview, mind you. I didn't start watching video. Okay. Okay. Maybe I think I watched one video to understand the role of a team leader. <laughs> my brothers and sisters in the Lord I was in the bus I am sure it was the Holy Spirit because left for me <laughs> that was when I said okay let me read about this company let me go to their website and read about them and know what they are about because I know nothing about this interview I mean this company I opened my phone just glanced through their websites just Picked one or two points. <laughs> I got to the interview. I got to the place. And the manager told me, Ah, you came early. Okay, just hold on for a minute. She was so nice. <laughs> she now gave me the numeracy, um, whatever, questions I should answer. You know, just to test your reasoning and your ability to write English and do some calculations and know some things, you know. Yeah. So I just did all, did the thing, sharp, sharp, make sure my work was clean and neat. Handed it over. I said, okay, I should give her some time before we do the oral interview. So immediately I sat down. She asked me, what do you know about the company? You know, I don't want to call the name. What do you know about this company? And I started downloading everything I read on the bus. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I started downloading everything I read on the bus. Thank God I remember them. I started downloading everything. Then she started asking me other questions I didn't prepare for, but then I answered to the best of my ability. But she was so kind. I, I felt I found favor before her because there are some questions I now give her. She will now, you know, sort of try to supplement the answer for me, like telling me, okay. After doing that, would you also do this in this case? I say, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I mean, those, those things she were, she was telling me I should have done or I should have said, should have actually disqualified me. But somehow God wanted me to get the job. And you know, when I was applying for this job, I was telling God, give me the one that is my own. Give me the job that is my own. I want, if I remember to go to work, I am happy. If I remember work, I am happy. I don't want to be, you know, I don't, I don't want to be tired. I want to stay there the number of 
months or years you want me to stay there and live peacefully with my head held high with my shoulder how do they used to put that English? With my shoulders held high, something like that, you know, with my dignity intact. And I want to be happy going to work. As it's very important to me that I'm happy doing what I'm doing. If I am not happy, it's useless for it's useless. Forget the money, forget the job. I just want to be happy on the job. And God answered my prayers, ladies and gentlemen. So after the interview that me, I felt I didn't do well. I was not even expecting to get the job. I was not, I don't know. I say, when we finished, she now told me, if you're okay, I would like to hire you for you to be part of our team. I said, huh? I, I thought you would, you would like maybe go home and then, I mean, you, I will go home and then you take some days to, you know, go through whatever before you make your decision. You say, well, when I see someone that can do the job and someone that really cares, I know the way I'm feeling. And I know by the way I'm feeling towards you, I know you can do the job. So if you're okay, I would like to give you the job. I say, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was saying it, tears. I was trying to fight back tears from falling out of my eyes. <laughs> so I started asking her some questions, how the job is, how many people I'll be working with, who is my line manager, blah, blah, blah. She now said, uh, told me all those things. I'll be working with other team leaders on the shift one or two, depending. Uh, I can always talk to the deputy manager or I can always talk to her. I said, okay, you are obviously very easy to talk to. So that makes it easy. So my brothers, that was how I came out and started going home, thinking that, feeling like it was film. I said, me, team leader, his skills, his skills. <laughs> and then I told her that I just want to be working three nights per week because my husband works four nights. I just want to stick with three nights because normally you're supposed to work three nights this week four nights the following week three nights for just like that but i told her let me stick to just 36 weeks per 36 hours per week she said okay that's okay that's okay so and i remember telling my friend nancy as in when i i didn't get that nhs job i remember complaining so bitterly to her nancy told me uh, you see this one I, I was not telling her that i have another interview on friday that friday she now and i'm not preparing anything i'm not dressing well i'm not doing anything she now told me you see this away you know go prepare for now you go get i mean i didn't even take it with you know take it to heart but when i came out from that interview i called nancy i told nancy nancy i got the job <laughs> So the whole onboarding process started, you know, you know how seriously they take reference in this country. So thankfully I was able to get reference from my, the agency I was working for, working for, yeah. And then from British Red Cross because I'm a volunteer. <sighs> oh, and then I started. This is five months on the job now. So I'm filming this video. This is five months on the job. And I am happy. God answered my prayers. I'm very happy doing the job. I love going to work. I enjoy the people I am working with, the people I am working for, the people I'm taking care of. It's been amazing. It's been amazing. On the, I think on the first month or second month of the job, somebody, you know, one of the team leaders wanted to, you know, discourage me. She was, she was, she was, she behaved so unprofessionally towards me. And because I know that this job, God has given it to me. And if I allow this lady to disturb my peace of mind, I'm not going to enjoy this job. You know what I did? I gathered courage from the Holy Spirit because me, normally, <laughs> I would have, you know, say, let me stay on my own. But then, I cannot allow anybody to put sand inside the garret that God has given me. I confronted her. And before you know what was happening, you know, whatever, the point is that I had to talk to my deputy manager. I had to talk to my manager and say, everybody should respect themselves. I didn't come here to look at nobody's face. I came here to walk 
and I love my job and I will not allow anybody to intimidate me. And that was how the issue was sorted. And I'm truly, truly grateful to God for coming through for me. You know, it was not escalated. Everything died down. Everybody's working in peace and harmony now. <laughs> yeah, so that has been my experience so far. Um, I'm grateful to God for answering my prayers. I'm grateful to God for the opportunity to get this kind of experience, you know, to get this, you know, kind of life experience and employment experience it's been amazing it's been amazing i'm trying my best to do my job you know it's not it's not really easy going to work you know and you know you're not allowed to blink for the 12 hours shift you're not allowed to blink you cannot dare sleep on your shift i now come back home i still have my family to take care of and all that and all that it hasn't been easy physically mentally but then i am happy i am genuinely grateful to god so that is it i don't know if you learned anything from my story but the moral of it is trust god trust god trust her no babe okay i'm going to end my video here i'll see if i can edit this video today and post it thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel I'll see you later. Bye.